Just imagine a world without pushy salespeople. <laughs> That's very hard, isn't it? See, 91% of business-to-business -business customers in Denmark have experienced pushy sales tactics within the past six months. Interestingly, four out of five salespeople say that they personally would never engage in pushy sales tactics. So why the discrepancy? Well, first of all, I need to push that. Sales has traditionally not been viewed as a science, but as a sales, uh, salesmanship or craftsmanship. So very little research has been done within the sales interaction. Most of the sales research that is being done today even is being done on a strategic and tactical level of a sales organization. And in sales practice, when we do sales, we actually work with argumentation th theory, persuasion theory, and theories on how to question people. Theories that are all designed on the assumption that one person, the salesperson, can convince or persuade, or maybe sometimes even manipulate another person into making a decision of a purchase. So I decided that we needed to do something radically different. First of all, we need to understand that in order to master sales, a salesperson has to have three elements in line. A particular sales method, some amount of emotional intelligence, and the ability to master and to navigate consciously within the interaction, or to be aware of what I'm doing when I'm doing it, when I'm doing a speech like this, perhaps. <laughs> So I decided to change the way we train salespeople. So instead of trying to train tactics such as how to question to get a particular answer, I would train salespeople in doing open-ended dialogue without a goal or without a sales in mind. We would work with innovation practices. How do you facilitate a dialogue as opposed to how do you solve a problem for your customer? And finally, how do I focus and frame my conversations to be about learning together instead of just being to make a sale? And the results were quite astonishing. Sales went up, sales efficiency rose as well. And only 7% of the customers felt that they were being, you know, that, that they experienced some kind of pushy sales behavior. So now I ask you again, can you imagine a world without pushy salespeople? Maybe it is possible. Thank you. <laughs>